when the probably most uh, prominent PhD student of my university, Karl Marx, was saying that human beings only set themselves such problems they can resolve, then we have to know that he was saying that in the age of modernity and not at the age of Anthropocene. Because when in the age of Anthropocene, we need first of all to foster a widespread awareness of the need for appropriate action. There is an old joke. There's one man grabbing around under his lanterns, and the policeman is coming up and says, what are you doing there? He said, I'm looking for my key. And said, where did you lose it? He said, over there. And they said, but why are you looking here for? Because there is the light here. And I think we are exactly in that situation that we have the spotlights of science on certain issues, and we are thinking that we have to find the solution only in there, but maybe we lost control somewhere else. So with globalization, uh, a long established worldviews are challenged on a broad front. I'm saying very often we are experiencing, we had a 300 year, 400 year brainwash of national or nationalistic thinking and now we are confronted with a totally new situation and we are not uh, uh, prepared for that. A lot of people are disoriented in this new situation and what we are thinking is uh, strategies that are backward uh, oriented. So backward oriented forward strategies. That's the channels faced situations in policies. We are looking for solutions in the back in the 19th century of nationalism, but the, the problems we are facing are completely different of that structure. I'm just giving a short illustration of that, of the geographical conditions of the age of the Anthropocene for a simple screen we are using here on stage right now. The minerals are coming from all over the world. So if you are not even moving one kilometer over the Earth's uh, uh, surface, you are living globalized conditions wherever we live. Nearly every product has a globalized constellation in itself. The same is the, truth, uh, the case for garbage, especially in respect of the pollution of the air. Depending on the way we are moving on the planet, we are polluting differently our atmosphere and it stays there as smoke at least for five to ten days so we can say smoke is a regional problem we can change it but after that um, but we can also say that in 2017 still about smoke situations for four million, uh, five million people got killed by polluted air uh, but it's even more dramatic after that the pollution is transforming into carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide goes in the atmosphere, mixes in two to four years around the planet, and stays there for at least 100 years. So this is a global constellation of local action. So our local garbage becomes global garbage, and the problem is that the most important parts of our life are global commons, and nobody is feeling responsibility for it for air, water, and many other things. So, in the face of global, cultural, social, and climate change, we have no other option than to see our life in a global perspective. Human history, for a very long time, has been embedded in global processes in respect of the natural conditions, atmospheric uh, transformations, and so on, but in the social, cultural, and economic respect, this is a totally new situation that we are connecting with the world in real time all over the world. So global thinking presupposes global understanding. So we cannot act saying think globally, act locally if we don't understand the global constellation. So to clarify the connection between the local and the global is one of the most important duties in my view of future educational uh, uh, curriculum. The aim for future education, therefore, is to promote a better understanding of how the local impacts the global, that, and to, pro to provoke actions and decisions that yield sustainable outcomes all over the world, every day, everywhere. 
So what is global understanding very briefly? In fact, global understanding means making understandable how much our lives are embedded in global natural processes, but also cultural, social, and economical flows. So we are embedded in global flows and our actions are contributing a tiny little bit in the change or in the production of these kind of flows in a helpful or less helpful, uh, healthy way. So global understanding clarifies connections between the local and the global. That would be the point. So, but the implications of that are quite dramatic. If you want to really do that, we have to turn away from our way to think the world in container spaces or nations. We have to turn from that kind of reality interpretation towards a practice-centered perspective. That's the proposition. If we do that, looking at what people are doing in local places all over the world in respect of the global constellation, then we have also to change the idea of environment towards a contemporary world. Because we are part of this world, we are not outside of it. Environment is Heckel's idea to put the surroundings for living species more prominent than others. He has also to change from interdisciplinarity to transdisciplinarity and from the nation national to the global perspective. Just a, a tiny little bit idea of how to do that in 120 seconds, if that's possible. No, no, you please, so please, you have one minute. Okay. The on. everyday practices in the center of the focus. Every practice is part of the biophysical world with the body of the actor. So the intersection, the interface is going through us and not between the environment and us. But we are also part of the social culture. And with the body, we are always localized in a specific place on planet Earth. And what we are doing is binding or bonding role processes into our practices. And the way that this should or could happen should be more sustainable than we are doing it today. So three interfaces for the curriculum of future um, uh, education or proposition, how the local impacts the global, how the cultural is the decisive starting point for the interpretation of nature, and therefore that every day life should be the core of science and not according to the scientific division, uh, the, uh, division of scientific labor in disciplines to, un to subdivise everyday practices in all fields of scientific uh, specialization, but looking at what people are doing, what the problem is, and then asking what can the different uh, scientific disciplines contribute to the solution of everyday practices. And that's real transdisciplinarity. We can do that in respect of eating and drinking, how we are integrating the world in our activities by moving and staying or belonging, housing, working, urbanizing, and waste and recycling, preserving, communication, networking, interacting, and sports, entertaining, recreating. So these are all forms or corporal activities where the, uh, the, global, uh, the local impacts the global. The idea is to launch, maybe with the support of this academy, a UN decade on science and humanities for global understanding, reorganizing the scientific organization of knowledge and how to implement it into new everyday practices. Thank you very much. Okay.